Hi guys, this is your tutorial 11 for building science and services to the topic 3, energy management. So there's a few questions here. So this tutorial covers mostly theory question. So let's get on with it. So the first question is asking to discuss the difference of fossil fuel energy and renewable energy. So the first difference is fossil fuel is limited in amount and renewable energy, if you look at it, is something that is occurring naturally. So this is the first difference. The second difference is that this renewable energy that we are looking at is something that occur naturally. So it doesn't contribute much, much to the pollution of our environment. Whereas fossil fuel in which if we do not disturb it is actually deep in our earth. So once we dig it up and we burn it, we are actually releasing a lot of harmful gases to the environment. So these harmful gases will contribute to global warming and also acid rain. So these are the two difference between fossil fuel energy and renewable energy. Okay, so this is the consumption of fossil fuel energy and renewable energy in Malaysia. So in Malaysia, we are still mostly depending on natural gas and oil and also coal. Lah. So there's not much electric uh, hydro dam or we are using biomass which means you are burning the waste to produce electricity or energy. So when you say energy, mostly is electricity. Lah. So we are trying to generate electricity out of all these different sources. Okay, so next question is to discuss why alternate energy sources are needed urgently today. So this question is linked closely to the first question because of fossil fuel they are limited so if you are to keep depending on fossil fuel once fossil fuel is depleted means we use up all the resources on earth then we will not have an alternate source to generate our electricity or energy so we cannot be over dependent on these finite resources so the next one is fossil fuel actually generate a lot of negative impact to the environment. So when we are using it to generate electricity or power, we are releasing all this sulfur dioxide or nitrogen oxide into the environment. This will cause acid rain and also CO2, which is carbon dioxide. So these three gases, two of them which is which causes acid rain and one of them which, which causes greenhouse effect on our earth are actually very bad for our environment. Okay, so the third question is to explain the potential environmental issue associated with the consumption of fossil fuel energy. So one of it is once we use a lot of coal and oil, we will emit a lot of sulfur dioxide and nitrogen oxide. So this is what makes acid rain. And then the byproduct of the combustion process, which is the soot and also the carbon dioxide. So carbon dioxide is what makes global warming happen on Earth. So this is called a greenhouse effect. Lah. So this is what happened when fossil fuel is used up. And the uh, other issue that you might encounter with fossil fuel is this is in an event that the transportation of these resources is disrupted or there's a problem with it. So what, what happened is the oil was spilled out and this will in turn pollute the environment. 
Okay, so the next one is briefly state the step on what can be done in energy management to overcome the over dependency of fossil fuel. So this is this step given is not really to overcome the over dependency of fossil fuel. Lah. It's more like to reduce reduce the dependent reduce the energy consumption. So instead of using 100, we try to reduce it to maybe about 60. So first off is the improving the energy efficient. So in homes, business and industry. So energy efficiency is for example, let's give an example which is a light bulb. So for a light bulb, let's say we need to light up a room, we need light. So we use a light bulb. But now we have new technology which is LED light. So instead of choosing a light bulb which will cost more to turn on as opposed to a LED light which is a bit more expensive but it is able to light up the area even brighter and more energy efficient as opposed to a LED uh, as opposed to a normal light bulb which is not able to efficiently convert all the energy that is being used to power up the light into light. So how this light bulb and LED, the LED light is being efficient is in terms of converting the electricity being used to jet being used to power up this light into light. Lah. So LED uh, light bulb is less efficient in terms of most of the energy being used to power up this light bulb is being generated into heat. So energy is wasted lah in terms of that. That's why a LED light is more energy as opposed to a light bulb. So this is an example in a very small scale. Lah. So when you go to a large scale like maybe a icon, then you have to look at the energy rating lah, on maybe so this is not so obvious so you have to look at the energy rating how much horsepower or how much energy is it consuming in an hour so depending on how big the room you have you have to choose a suitable size lah, so for your icon so if you look at the picture here in Malaysia if a uh, application is and is energy efficient, then usually they will have this symbol la, which is an energy star to let you know that this product has been verified and go through a QA QC check and they are deemed energy efficient as opposed to other product. So this is an idea behind how to improve the energy efficiency in home businesses and industry lah. so this is the building services part what sort of building services we choose what sort of product is it a light bulb or a LED bulb or is it a commercial icon or a residential icon so we choose the product based on the requirement and the the requirement that we need Okay, so the next one is using as much as possible low energy material. So uh, this may be in terms of building. So we try to source the pro source the construction product as close as possible. So it may be so this is a debate lah. It may be cheaper to get something that's far away for the same uh, for the required amount. But if you say in terms of energy efficient, then if you were to get something very far away as opposed to getting something close by, even if the material is the same, you're actually wasting energy. So this energy wastage is not from the material itself, but from the transportation of this material from point A to your site or point B to your site. So the further you get, the, the further away the material is, 
the more energy you're consuming to transport the material to site. Okay, so the next one is practice forestation. So you are planting more trees instead of uh, cutting down the forest. The next one is reduce CFC emission. So as of now, uh, CFC is getting banned. Lah. So CFC is actually a man-made chemical for refrigerant. So uh, refrigerant is what you have in your air conditioner or your fridge. Lah. So this CFC is actually man-made chemical. So we are, as of now, we have found out that CFC have a lot of negative impact to the environment and also to us and also the animal. That's why we are bending out CFC. But those old model that we have still have is still using CFC la. So steps have to be taken to find out this old model and dispose of them properly. Okay, so the next one is substituting fossil fuel with alternative and renewable energy. So this is pretty self-explanatory. And then increasing the use of recycled and waste material. So instead of throwing away the material, we should always think of methods to try to recycle whatever we use. Like the 3R that we have, lah, which is, has been practiced and taught to us which is the reuse, recycle, or reduce. Ah. So if you do not need it, then you don't use it. Lah. If you are to use it, try to recycle it. And then lastly is to train more people on the environmental aspect. So energy management, there's a lot of way to manage energy. So this is a way and the example that I given to you is how energy can be managed uh, so that we do not waste so much energy. We do not use up all the fossil fuel that we have on this energy that is redundant. Uh. Okay, so question number five with eight of diagram. Explain the main building services that consume electric energy. So there's a few items in which consume a lot of electric energy in a building. So the first one is the air conditioning and ventilation system. Lah. So this is more towards commercial building. So commercial building, because we are going there to work or we are going there to do our shopping, Air conditioning and ventilation system is the item or the building services that consume the most energy in the building. So the second one will be escalator and lift, which is the building transportation system. The next one is the artificial lighting system, which is our light. And then lastly is our electrical appliances. So we have our photocopy machine, computer, printer, fax machine, all this machine. So why this is the last one is because you do not use it uh, all the time, lah, except refrigerator. Lah. So these are the few main building services, the four main building services that consume electrical energy in a building. So there's a two representative of how much energy the building services will take up in a commercial building and a residential building. So in a commercial building, as I've said, air conditioning will be the most, and then it will be followed by office equipment, lighting, and lift. And then if it's a residential building, so let's say if it's a high rise, then you will have lift and escalator, lah, which will consume the most electrical energy and then next come will be the air conditioning pumping and lighting so because people needs to go up and down so lift will take up a lot of energy in the building lah. okay so number five 
the oh, okay. So this is another representation of the breakdown of the building services. Okay, so number six. So explain the concept and solution of energy efficiency in building services. So the concept of energy efficiency is to take all possible measures to ensure that the building use of energy is minimal. So you want to make sure when you are building your building services in the building is being used, you want to make sure that they are being used efficiently. Means when there are people there, then you use it. If there are no people there, then you off it. Lah. So this is the idea, the concept, lah, the main concept of energy efficiency. So energy efficiency will prolong the fossil energy that now exists and it buys time so that we can develop an alternative lah, instead of depending on fossil fuel. So what we are looking at is a renewable energy. Lah. Okay, so the there's two solution. The first is the passive energy efficiency. So we use a low consumption device like the LED, which I mentioned. Either that, or we can switch to optimal temperature, encourage natural ventilation and natural lighting. So optimum temperature for a uh, aircon through research. So I see uh expert recommend about 25 degree for your aircon for house usage uh, residential usage purpose to get the best bang for your bucks uh. and then encourage natural ventilation so you have your window natural lighting yes so this is also your window so the next is the active energy efficiency so we have so we have your hvac control so your ventilation and air conditioning control lighting control and then your real-time monitoring and timing control so active energy efficiency is by manually controlling all these building services means if you have your lobby in a high-rise if there's nobody after midnight so you might opt to switch off your icon and also open only half of your light so this is to conserve energy because people are not going to use the lobby and maybe for lift you can also implement that for your lift so instead of having four lift running simultaneously during the off peak hour you may opt to just close two of the leaf to conserve the energy. So this is a energy star and the energy rating. So if you were to look around the appliances to get the best money for your appliances, try to search for the appliances that have this sticker. So the energy rating is the best last. So you you'll be able to see how much kilowatts per hour per year this appliances is going to consume. So this is what's going to show you how much is it going to cost to use these appliances, electrical appliances. So since you have already learned up your, uh, through your assignment, you should be able to easily calculate like, how much it will cost to run your electrical appliances by looking at how much kilowatt per hour these appliances requires to run. Okay, so question number seven. In spite of the huge amount of energy obtained from small amount of fuel, state the reservation to use of nuclear power. So it's asking us why we are not switching to nuclear power so nuclear power is actually a uh, infinite uh, is a sorry is a finite resource once we use it finished then it will be finished lah. 
But one thing about nuclear power is it is something new and we are actually able to harness a large amount of energy from very very small amount of fuel. But there's a reservation uh, because nuclear power, first off, they are radioactive. So we have to have a lot a very high safety precaution to harvest this fuel. So there's a few reservation. The first one is a fear of reactor accident. So Fukushima Japan uh if a nuclear reactor is to leak, then it will emit a lot of harmful impact to the environment. Lah. So either that or if the fuel itself were to be compromised, then it will explode, lah, which is very bad and it will kill a lot of people. So the second is the risk to human life to low level of radiation. So because this is a react, uh, react radioactive material, so why this low level of radiation is bad to human is because we are actually living more than 10 years and above. So if you are to be continuously exposed to this level of radiation, then because we are living up to 30, uh, we are living a very long lifespan, then we will actually develop this cancerous spell, uh, cancerous cell, which is uh, unhealthy to us. Lah. So we will fall sick and we will die. Lah. So that's why radiation is very dangerous to humans because we live a long life. So the third one is the environment problem of dealing with nuclear waste. So nuclear waste, once you have used up the energy on this fuel to generate the energy, they will have a problem with disposing of this nuclear waste. Because once all the energy is obtained from the fuel, it is still emitting heat and also radiation. So there's a environment problem of how to dispose of this waste. So you cannot simply ship it overseas to another country. Lah. There's a regulation to that. Okay, the fourth one is may lead to the proliferation of nuclear weapon. So it means since we have nuclear material, why not make a weapon? So it's a dangerous also. Lah. So the construction, the lastly is the construction cost of nuclear plant is much higher than fossil fuel installation. So there's a lot of reservation to nuclear power. So once we use up the waste, what's going to happen? And one, when we are harvesting the fuel, it's not as simple of just harvesting it. If you make a mistake, it will go, it will explode. Lah. And then you will explode in a very spectacular way. Lah. Okay, so next question. Elaborate the mechanism of how geothermal energy works. So also provide brief reason why geothermal energy sourcing may not be suitable for Malaysia. So how geothermal work is by getting heat from inside the earth. So we drill into the earth and then they will be able to obtain the heat to heat up the water to produce steam. So we are actually drilling hole deep into the earth core and try to get to a hot rock surface. And then we use this hot rock by pouring water into this hole to produce steam. So with this steam, we will actually be able to use it to drive the turbine and this will in turn drive the electric generator. So in Malaysia, we actually do not have a lot of, we do not have a lot of layer or we do not have a lot of area in which is generally good for geothermal harvesting. So uh, usually we want to find 
volcanic active area. So if you do not have any volcanic active area, which we cannot go very close to the lava or the hot rock, then we actually have to dig very, very deep into the earth, which is not viable. Lah. So that's why in Malaysia, it's not suitable to use geothermal energy. Okay, so the next one is describe how a hydroelectric power station works. So a hydroelectric power station is generating electricity through the falling of water. So you'll be able to see that in this picture, a dam is usually built. So this is to trap the river water in the valley. So once the water river water has accumulated to a level then a dam this opening is open so all this wash water pressure will push down onto this small opening to get out from this dam so this opening is where the turbine will be installed and it will in terms turn and generate and power up the generator so this is basically the idea of how a hydroelectric power station works. Okay, so question number 10. Explain how to achieve the environmental sustainability concept in a new development. So there's a few, which is about five. So the first one is resource consumption will be minimal. So you consume only the required amount of resources and not more. Lah. So the second is you are to use recycled material or renewable resources. The third is uh, recycling the waste stream. Fourth will be to conserve energy and energy supplied. So making sure all the energy is renewable maybe you use it you use a solar panel or wind power or biomass and lastly is to source your local supply so you are to source your supply locally instead of getting it from the city lah, or a very very far place so this is to keep your transportation energy consumption at minimal level so all this is actually linked to what I have said before. Lah. Okay, so question 11, discuss the concept of green building. So green building focus on increasing the efficiency of resources use while reducing building impact on human health and the environment. They are designed to save energy, resource, recycle material, minimize the emission of toxic substance throughout its life cycle. So green building is actually a concept which is introduced into the construction industry. So we are focusing not on uh, getting a very very nice project getting the project done very quickly or getting the project cheaply so the focus is not about these three aspects the focus is about environment impact and how to reduce the energy consumption of this building so you may have a building before you build it you have to consider the effect you have on the environment when you are building it and then once you have finished building it you have to consider the life cycle of this building <clears throat> building uh, completing a project for a building actually might take about only two to three years but when you think about the life cycle of the building which can go on to about 80 to 100 years then that is the area in which we have to pay attention 
to this building. So if you were to actually make this a green building in which is 50% more energy efficient as opposed to a normal building, then you actually save a lot of money and you are actually saving the environment in the long run. So we don't use so much electricity to power up this building. So we are saving money and also the environment. So this is the idea behind the green building concept. <coughs> so in Malaysia, we have this GPI, which is the green building index. So there are five main aspects to it, which is energy saving, water saving, a healthier indoor environment, so better connectivity and public transport, and also the adoption of recycling and greenery. <clears throat> so building in Malaysia, if we have this GDI index to follow, lah. so this is not a requirement, but when you go to larger scale, government may impose a GBI requirement to follow. So you have to design the building in a way such as is more energy efficient and then we want to connect so for the fourth one we want to have better connectivity so this is more to the city lah. so on the countryside we don't have any we don't have much choice lah. but in city if we know that there is public transportation then we want to reduce reduce the usage of personal vehicle by us normal people lah. so either that or we include more of this public transportation for the residential area to use so this is the idea behind the better connectivity to public transport lah. so all this aspect all this topic in building science and services they are actually correlated to each other so although they are linked uh, they are linked to each other in a very sub subtle way but at the end of the day when we have a building we think not of building up only the building you have to think of the life cycle of the building so this building is most probably gonna last longer than our lifespan lah. so and what we have which is a fossil fuel to power up our lifestyle is not gonna last forever so that's why we have to think of a way to reduce our energy consumption and also find out new way to get more energy because we are only going to go more and more technological advance and not go back lah. so this is all from me so thank you guys for remaining and listening to this tutorial so hope you guys understand and learn more from this course <laughs>